uh, Yan was listed in Forbes uh, 30 under 30 in energy in 2020. Since co-founding and after in 2017, uh, Yan leads the technical development and oversees the business operations uh, of the company in Germany and Italy. He holds a master's degree in aerospace engineering from Sheffield in the UK, University of Sheffield in the UK, and an MBA from Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. And with that, uh, Yan, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Um, so I'm very happy for this opportunity to present our AEM electrolyzers and adapters. Very different approach to the hydrogen world here with you. Um, the challenge for all of us is to reduce the cost of green hydrogen to become truly competitive with the fossil fuel alternatives. So uh, we have a very different, we looked at economic history um, and how the most dramatic cost reductions for technology came about. And what we find is that um, it, is, it is through mass produced standardized commodity products. So maybe not always bigger is cheaper, um, but uh, in, 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 and we believe that by standardizing commodities, green hydrogen uh, will become cheap. Um, next slide, please. So at the core, uh, Anaptor is an R&D company. Um, our origins lie with a, a catalyst development team um, that was working on uh, non-PGM catalysts um, and then uh, developed the foundation of our electrolyzer technology. And today we continue to strongly invest into this path and develop our electrolyzer technology. Um, it's really fun to work at Anaptor because our AEM electrolyzer technology is quite young compared to the traditional alkaline and PEM technologies. And uh, so we still see even now um, a lot of potential for us, uh, untapped potential to further improve it. So on this slide, you can see our current product, the EL 2.1. And um, we're really proud of this machine that's been developed over the last two years, um, uh, in, in iterate, iter iteratively developed over the last two years. And this machine is now significantly more compact, more efficient and lower cost than all its predecessors. And, um, and we think it has a, a very strong position in the market, with regard to, to especially to energy efficiency and cost for this type of size of the unit. So each EL 2.1 produces 500 normal liters of hydrogen gas per hour, um, already pressurized um, at 35 bar. And multiple units of these can just be stacked together to reach any desired production rate that is needed for a project. So why is it that we are building such a relatively small building block and why can we do this cost effectively? Um, the answer is on the next slide and it lies in our patented AEM technology. Essentially, the way that the anion exchange membrane electrolyzer works is quite similar to the PEM but uh, due to the fact that um, we, we are working in a slightly alkaline environment, we do not rely on cost on, on high cost materials. So especially um, if, if we remember Emanuele's introduction in the beginning, um, bipolar plates, uh, we do not need titanium for this. We can just use normal steel. Um, and this is probably even a bigger cost saving than the, than the, rely on, than the, the not having to rely on the PGM metals as well. So we don't need iridium, we don't need platinum, um, but the biggest cost saving is that we don't need titanium um, and we can actually build our stack from very low materials. Um, and then the next, next feature is that the operation of the cell. Oh, sorry, can you go back um, to the previous slide? Okay, so we are circulating um, our liquid electrolyte only on the anode um, and we are operating with a differential pressure. That means that on the balance of plant side, for the water circuit, all we need is a tank and a pump, and um, we are circulating the water through the anode. At atmospheric pressure, we can use plastic components, very low cost. Whereas on the hydrogen side, um, we are producing hydrogen under pressure, and, it, and due to the operation with a dry cathode, actually we are getting highly pure, directly compressed hydrogen directly from the stack. So that means we have both a low cost stack and a low cost, very simple balance of plant, and this is the prerequisites for being able to make a building block, that a small building block that can be mass produced. So talking about efficiency, um, I've included here a polarization curve. Um, next slide. Um, for 
other, for everyone to understand the actual underlying uh, details of the performance of the electrolyzer. And so currently, when we are operating at nominal production rate, we run our stacks at 0 0.8 amps per square centimeter. Uh, you cannot co directly compare this with other technologies, um, but within a technology, you always want to improve the, the current density to be able to have a smaller stack with less, less active area to produce the same amount of hydrogen. At, at our current density of 0 0.8 amps per square centimeter, we, we operate at a cell voltage of just over 1.7 volts. And so this leads to a really great stack efficiency. Um, you, our balance of plant is so simple that actually um, also for that only very little energy is needed. And our current system has a steady state power consumption of 4.8 uh, kilowatt hours per uh, normal cubic meter of hydrogen. That's for the complete system. For the stack, it is actually just 4.3 um, kilowatt hours per normal cubic meter. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so I have mentioned it in the beginning. Um, we are scaling in a very different way. Um, rather than building very large individual units, um, we are building small units that we want to mass produce. So this is, um, you can draw an analogy to PV panels, for example, or also to the IT industry. Um, in the 1980s, computers were getting bigger and bigger, filling up entire floors and skyscrapers just for a computer for one company. Um, and these mainframes, these big computers, they don't exist anymore. Nowadays, um, all server, servers and large computing centers are built up from uh, modular computers, slate computers that are just stacked together. And all of this is based on, on PC architecture that has uh, replaced these giant um, machines uh, with modular small um, commodity items. And so our electrolyzer is the um, PC of the hydrogen industry. Uh, next slide, please. This is where we are at with our development. So when we started in 2017 um, until today, we have almost uh, halved the price of our electrolyzer, keeping all the uh, keeping the uh, um, the size and production rate the same. Um, we are aiming to release a new version of our product every year, uh, uh, making the each individual building block smaller, more efficient, and lower cost. So by the time that our mass production facility will be up and running, um, we think that the cost of our electrolyzers from today will be uh, just 20% of what it costs today. Next slide, please. Stackability is extremely important. So whereas each individual unit we want to make as compact and as, uh, as compact as possible, um, we then have to stack them to reach the, the and make them very easy to use for um, the any kind of applications. So today, um, most of our customers put our electrolyzers in cabinets, such as the ones on the left. Um, and uh, we are now working on deploying the first uh, container, um, building the first container, which has uh, roughly 150 kilowatts. Um, this is just made up of stacking EL 2.1s together. Then the pro other project that we are working on right now is the AEM multi-core. So when we are looking at uh, large scale systems, we see that um, we can benefit both from the cost reductions of the mass produced um, electrolyzer building block of the stack, as well as the typical cost reductions that come with centralizing those components that do not scale with unit numbers. So we can centralize the bio balance of plant for the megawatt scale system um, and just put in uh, hundreds of our stack modules and that can easily be put, uh, easily be um, you know, stacked to, to the right number, uh, to the, to, to the um, production rate that's needed. And with this kind of system, we will have uh, extremely high reliability. Um, we will have extremely flexible control because um, each, each uh, string of modules can be individually controlled. And um, on the balance of plant, uh, we will have very significant cost savings. Um, again, looking back at Emanuele's uh, introduction, for example, for the large electrolyzer plant, um, uh, the, the balance of plant was 50% and the power supply was 50% of that. So if you're looking at a large electrolyzer, that would mean um, a quarter of it is just a power supply. 
Well, with this kind of concept, having modular um, building blocks that are stacked together, they essentially behave, our stack modules essentially behave like a battery pack. So we can use standardized power electronics that are used also in PV and battery industries, and we can also save a lot of cost on all the different DLP components. Next slide, please. Okay, so uh, with these size systems, we think that we are very well placed to um, address the hydrogen needs of the energy world of, the, of tomorrow. Um, we can see, of course, there will be a need for some very large scale centralized plants for industry and other use cases. But if we look at the scale of European power generation as it will develop, as it's um, estimated to develop over the next 30 years, we see a very clear trend towards decentralization. We see a big peak at the range, uh, at the small kilowatt range, which is distributed generation, mostly rooftops and um, private con uh, prosumers. Um, participating in the energy world, and we see another giant peak with solar, and largely driven by solar and wind, in the low megawatt range. And so, um, looking at these trends of decentralization and um, smart uh, energy systems in the future, uh, we think that our modular mass-produced um, electrolyzer is uh, the right way to address this market and to do so in a very flexible manner. Next slide, please. The solar panel has uh, disrupted the um, electricity world and has made energy consumers into prosumers. And we think that decentralized hydrogen, click one more time, please. And we think that with our modular decentralized electrolyzers, the same can be done to uh, fossil fuels. Thank you very much um, for your attention and look forward to the next discussions. That's great, Jan. Thank you very much for that presentation. Uh